Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Alan Baumgarten, two-time Oscar nominee, whose new film is Being the Ricardos, Aaron Sorkin's uh, latest about uh, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Uh, Alan, congratulations on the film. I, I'm a big fan of your work and the film. I, and this is now, I think, your, your third film with Aaron as a director. Uh, how early does he like bring you into the process and tell you about like, you know, what his plans are and how's that work for you? Uh, well, sure. Thank you very much for the intro, Chris. Good to be here. Good to talk to you. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, let me just explain that now being the third time I've worked with Aaron, each time it's become increasing uh, the amount of involvement that I've had. So um, especially on this film, on being the Ricardos, Aaron gave me the script uh, fairly early. We were finishing the trial of the Chicago 7. We were doing the sound mix and we were walking to the to the uh, re-recording stage one day and he just said, I'd like to give you this script uh, if you want to read it over the weekend and I'd like to offer it to you. So it was right then and there that he said he wanted me to come aboard and, and work with him. Uh, I read the script and loved it, gave him a few thoughts and ideas. We kicked around some things. Uh, he mentioned a couple of music ideas he had, but we didn't take it too far. We never really go in depth uh, in advance. Aaron sometimes mentions a film or a, a reference he might want to keep in mind. On this film, we didn't really do that. Uh, in the trial of Chicago 7, we did. We talked about some references. So I got involved a little bit early then as well. But uh, we have some initial talks. And uh, and I think now that we've worked together a few times, we, we kind of have a good sense of what we're going for. And we just let it happen as we as we started on the film. A little bit of prep, some dialogue, some communication, but not a, not a, a lot of in-depth work beforehand. It's kind of fascinating, I would say. I like I love all three of the films Aaron's directed, and I think your editing is, you know, like the way you uh, work with his dialogue, I find really fascinating. And like, I think all these movies uh, are very quickly, they just feel very quick and like a very engaging watch. And I think that comes through his dialogue and the visuals and the way you're kind of putting it all together. I, why do you think, I, like, before, I would love, before we talk about the specificity of the film, I guess like just mm -hmm. overall, why do you think you're such a great match with him as a director? Because I really feel like your collaborations are, are so... Yeah, like I said, like very engaging and the movies are just, the, the proof is in the movies. So I guess like how come, why do you think that like you guys work so well together? Well, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. We, we complement each other very well. I think, uh, you know, I love the scripts that he writes, the style he's going for, and then also the freedom that he gives me to, to put it together the way I see uh, or feel that it should be at least in the early stages. So he lets, gives me free reign which is a wonderful way to start. So I aim for what he's, what I think he's going for, but I also inject little surprises along the way. Some I'll present to him right away. Some I'll hold back until later. So I give him what I think he's, he's aiming for. And then it's, it's really about finding the hidden gems in the material in, in all cases that are above and beyond the script or separate. And that's the material that the actors give us, what they capture on set. And so I'm very attuned to finding those things, looking for little moments of discovery, surprises that wouldn't necessarily have been in the script or maybe not exactly as written, but it enhances a moment. And, uh, I think there's a line in, in the film actually that uh, Lucy says when she's uh, going through one of the rehearsals with Fred and Ethel late at night on the soundstage and she says every beat has to be articulate or articulated. And that's really what it's about in editing too. So I feel that it's my discipline and perseverance in making sure every moment in the script lands. And it's the attention to detail that I think Aaron appreciates and that I, I pride myself on really working the material so that we think it's the best it can be. And, uh, you know, we care you know, very strongly about this and, and, and enjoy doing it. So uh, we kind of give it our all. So I think that's that's what makes it work. I mean, yeah, that's great. It's great to hear. And I think it's apparent, just like I said, and in the films, what, without, I mean, if you, would you mind, like, what was the surprise in this one that you were like, you know, kind of like giving him that you would maybe like, we're holding back and then gave him, I guess, in the edit? <laughs> uh, I think sometimes in this case, it was moments of just holding on an actor because we have, inherent in all of Aaron's scripts, a very rapid pace, a great sense of overlap of dynamic energy and dialogue. But it's important to make sure we maintain and cultivate the moments where we can just be on an actor and feel something through a reaction or through listening. So there are some shots in the film um, when Lucy's on the soundstage at 2 a.m. where we're with her, we're also with Fred and Ethel with just silent cutaways where we're just holding the tension through reactions. Uh, later in the film in Desi's office where, uh, there's a big confrontation between you know, Lucy and Desi. And then uh, we hold on her by the window, just listening, and we're still on her face. And there are other moments too, and I tried to bring that out, uh, a great shot of Ethel ending the scene where she and Lucy are speaking in the uh, wardrobe room, where we just linger on Vivian's face uh, there. And we, we feel that the, the moment lands. So I think those are not necessarily surprises, but just moments that I made sure to 
to hold on to and, and, and convince Aaron that we're, you know, let's, let's make sure we balance it out. He's, he's very much aware of that. And also the fact that music, which was a big part of this film, will eat up a lot of time and, and just make a moment that you think you're maybe holding a bit, you know, long. It's not really long enough. But that music that's just carrying you emotionally, you want to stay on those shots. Uh, we also discovered, I think, um, and this was something we did together, of course, the surprise and, and you know, joy of, of getting the balance right on the thought process, the black and white material, when Lucy is thinking about the episodes and what she's going to do. And that was something that was written in the script, but is, as far as how it would play, we, we had to kind of get there. And uh, that was a case where I, I probably went too far and used too much and Aaron kept pulling me back, but he doesn't do it in a detail way of like, take this out, take this out. He just says, it's still, still too much. He comes in one day, looks at it and says, we're getting there, go a little further. And he leaves me to kind of experiment. So we kind of find our way there. And um, I know the title cards, we, I kind of gave him that with the black and white, you know, day one through day five, that was scripted as just white text on black. But we were always thinking, could we find a better way to integrate that into the film? It certainly worked in the early passes with just chapter cards. But then when we realized so much thematically about the film uh, was that sense of home and the place of the environment, the soundstage, the world of the show, that space that we spend so much time in on the set, on the Lucy stage, um, if we could maybe find those shots, which we had in uh, you know, freeze frames and stills where there were no actors, and we made the black and white, we just held and used those as a background. It kind of gave us an added feeling as we went through the story. So little things like that, and then just, uh, you know, numerous detailed surprises. It's it's so fascinating hearing you talk about it, and I just love, I, I love what you're saying there. I, I wanted to ask you too about, I think, the way you balance, not just the, like you were saying, not just like the black and white and like the thought process of Lucy or Lucille, I guess, in those, those cases, but um, the flashback, the, the, the way you structure, the way the film is structured with like both the faux documentary footage, like framing device, and then the flashbacks in the film, I found it's, it's so, as a viewer, I was like, this is awesome because like, you're just kind of thrown in and you have to pick it up and like kind of follow along and you guys aren't, it's not like, there's not, it's not like suddenly obvious, but you're able to keep up. And I guess, I guess, can you talk about like making it balanced? So it's like, you're not like holding the audience's hand in those, in like the cutting be between like the, you know, the framing device and the at flashbacks and the present day, but also like able to make it so, I guess, engaging, I don't for lack of a better word. I just found that way that it's balanced. So, so wonderful. And I think that's a lot to do with how you're editing the script and stuff and the, the film, obviously. Uh, well, thanks, Chris. Talking about the balance, I think, is the key. A lot of that comes from the script in terms of staying a little bit ahead of the audience. Aaron really is a believer in, as you said, not hand-holding, allowing an audience to catch up, but not being too far ahead. Try Don't go out of your way to be too clever. So we were um, always conscious of, you know, are we giving too much information or too little? And uh, in, in fact, in the interviews, we pulled out probably more there than anywhere else, although we also pulled back in the flashbacks. So in both cases, uh, I think relatively speaking throughout the film, those were the areas where we made some lifts and deletions. So there was more trimming and tightening in those areas because as you said, we had to calibrate really what was the right amount of lead to be giving and what amount of backstory because you're really wanting to maintain a forward momentum even if you are pausing to fill in the blanks or inject some new information on the side. So it was, um, a matter of just watching through the, the, the versions that we'd have and judging, uh, should we pull back a little bit more? It was never a case of having to add more. I think with Aaron's script, it's rich, it's full, it's complete. He's worked them so thoroughly that it's all there. Uh, there might be something we feel we have to emphasize by just uh, leaning into it a little bit more in our, in our edit or in our cup, but it's not never really compensating. It's just the opposite. It's like, what can we pull back? And I think that's the key to what you were saying is, you know, getting a balance where you were engaging an audience, bringing them with you on the journey, uh, but letting them also enjoy some surprises and discovery along the way. So you're not spelling it all out, but you're certainly leaving the right breadcrumbs along the right. way. That's, that's great. Yeah, well, I, you obviously, I know you've done the, the three films with Aaron as a the filmmaker. I, this, for me, I would say this, you don't have to say this. I think that not only is, I think he's getting, all the performances have been great. Like I love Jess, Justine and Molly's game. I think the Chicago 7 Ensemble is incredible. But I would say like the everyone here is like, I feel like at the top of their games and it's like you have these really incredible performances. And I guess as an act, as an editor, like, you know, getting to I, finesse those performances. I can, can you talk a little about that? I mean, Nicole and, and Javier, especially, I think are really remarkable in, in the film. And I guess like, yeah, like, how are you like, 
how is that to edit those kind of like A plus performances, I guess, when you're getting those? Well said, A plus all the way. <laughs> I mean, I knew that and they're precious. They're very valuable gifts to have performances like that um, from these actors, from all the films, as you mentioned, the other actors as well. But those films in some ways were maybe busier, a lot more going on, more characters, more story. And being confined to the five days, having the two principals and then the rest of the supporting cast who are also extremely strong and, and you know wonderful. Um, it's a more intimate, type of story in many ways. So we're trusting the actors and the performance. And that's what uh, my job is to preserve and elevate and really protect those moments and those beats, finding the best uh, material of the of the already great, you know, uh, vast amount of source material that I had, getting the very, very best. So I was just watching those performances and falling in love take after take with both Nicole and Javier. I mean, they both surprised me. Knowing that they were great actors was not the issue. It's really what they did with this material. And um, I think that was the strength that Aaron also had, trusting the story, trusting the actors. And um, because it, it was a fragile story and the fact that it's a romance, but there's a lot of joy, there's sadness, and there's a lot of pain involved. So we had to tread delicately, I think, to, uh, to make sure it all tracked. Uh, and it was really coming from the performances. I, I will sometimes manipulate performances, but my job is to really try to honor and, and preserve the integrity and the authenticity of every moment that these actors gave me and that they you know, present. But because of Aaron's desire for pace and certain stylistic uh, rhythms that he would want to have built into the script, I would at times find ways to manipulate uh, without it being obvious, whether it's a speed up or a jump or a, a split to join two takes together. There, there are different tricks we can do, little things up our sleeve that might uh, seamlessly help move occasionally a moment from the actors into the zone Aaron's looking for if it wasn't already there. Generally, it was already there and, and then some. I mean, they would also give us, as I said, surprises and moments that were just uh, so powerful that we had to had to use them. Right. And I mean, I just, I'm looking, you've done a lot of different types of films, obviously. Like, I think, you know, if you look, if you, people are watching this, they could, you can pull up, pull up your IMDb page. You have a lot of great movies on there. One of the things I was, when I was looking before we, inter before this interview, I was like, You've done a lot of movies that I would say have a lot of really funny comedy in them, but aren't, I wouldn't classify as traditional comedies, let's say, right? Like even, like obviously like American Hustle, like other Oscar nomination, like very funny in parts, but it's not a comedy. And I think you're really good at, and the same with like Aaron's films, I think Molly's Game and, and Trials of Chicago 7 have a lot of funny beats, this as well, but they're more dramas with comedy, I guess, maybe would be how I'd classify them. Can you talk a little, I mean, I think you're so great at like pulling out, I, I don't, I hazard, it's like, because obviously there is an artifice because you're doing a film, but it's like there is like a realness to the comedy that in, in the films you edit. And I think that is like a through line. And I guess, can you talk a little about like finding those real, like the real moments of comedy where it's not just like jokey comedy, if, if that makes sense. And I know you've done also like regular comedies like yeah. in the past mm -hmm. too, but I'm, I, I think you're really, the, the, the subtle nuances of like the comedy within a drama, I think you do really well. And I'd love to hear you talk about that. Uh, that's, it's a good question. It's hard to analyze. Let me think, I guess the bigger, broader comedies, yeah. obviously going for setups and jokes. So you're kind of crafting a path to lead you, uh, to a moment that's a payoff essentially. And in Aaron's films or in David o. Russell's films, the comedy is often just a cleverness and a, a sharply written line that's well-performed that sneaks up on you, or you notice it a half a beat after you've heard it. So it's really a matter of, as you said, preserving a naturalism and organic quality to the performance that's humorous or funny because it's in the writing and in the delivery. It's not something I'm constructing. Of course, I'm building the timing before and after it and laying it in so that it fits and flows in a way that's funny, but also dramatic. And I think that's sometimes the best key to why those things are funny in a, in a drama because they're unexpected. They're in a moment that when you're in a serious beat or a, a scene that isn't necessarily funny or humorous, all of a sudden the line pops out at you and it's very clever. So it's just really a matter of um, sneak, not sneaking it in, but, but making sure it doesn't uh, pop out in the wrong way. It's meant to be part of the greater whole of the scene, whereas in a broader comedy, you are certainly aiming for a target uh, that's a little bit, little bit more visible. So um, I find there are tremendous number of, of humorous lines in all of Aaron's films. That's one thing I appreciate about his writing and I often compliment him about the humor in his films, balanced and you know combined with the drama. And it's a key to making these films, I think entertaining as well as um, emotional, landing emotionally. So. Yeah, 
I, 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 we have to wrap up, but I would love, I'd love, uh, uh, basically every, uh, every interaction, JK Simmons as, uh, William Frawley and, uh, Nina Arianda as Vivian Vance have, I was in stitches. I think they're so funny and their repartee is so, it's just so well paced and like calibrated. I just was like in love with it. And they provide, I mean, everyone is funny in the movie, but I think they are very, very funny, I guess I would say. Thank you. Well, I, you know, um, take credit for, for building some of the pacing in there, but it's really following their performances and staying out of the way and letting these yeah. great actors do what they do and, uh, and working with that material. So they, they are fantastic. Everybody's great. And I had a, every, every, a lot, everybody. lot of work in the film. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, of course. Alan Baumgarten, uh, editor for Being Ricardo, is a two-time Oscar nominee. Uh, Aaron Sorkin's film is out now in a limited release in theaters and also available on Amazon uh, later this month. Thank you so much, Alan. Appreciate it. Good talking with you. Thanks, Chris. Take care. 